Okay. Good afternoon, all. I want to sincerely apologize for that break and for the poor connectivity that I couldn't really uh, share my screen. No issues, Professor. You can uh, tell me when to when you want to share change change the slide. You just uh, tell me the next slide. I will I will move to the next slide. Okay. Yes. So. Uh, I'm giving a talk on pollination, uh, pollination, paternity test, and uh, seedling traits assessed generator using nested and polycross meeting. Lots of activity on which the co authors that you have seen there. Yam is largely dioecious. Of course, we have a few monoecious types. You can see the photos of the female on the left, the first left, the close to that is the male flower part and then the fruit, the seed in the middle. The objective actually is at the end of the day to put smiles on various end users of the elite varieties of yam that we are uh, developed for various end uses. It could be that for the fresh market or for the product market like starch, flour, etc. Next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, there's an outline of my presentation. Uh, I'll be talking on three main activities. The is native to West Africa. That is a white guinea yam is native to West Africa and is used for food and uh, various end uses. Of course, it brings income even to over 300 million people in the region. Uh, but however, there are lots of uh, bottlenecks uh, relating to its breeding and genetics endeavors. And so even to realize genetic gain in this crop, we have to really embark on like uh, addressing lots of genetic and uh, biotic bottlenecks. Among the uh, biotic factors, we have uh, anthracnose is a real problem, depending on the time of attack and the severity of it, up to 90% yield loss can be caused by anthracnose attack and even that of uh, Yam mosaic virus. Again, re regarding the aesthetic value, it can be drastically reduced uh, due to severity of attack of nematodes, you know, both in field and also in storage, because we have a range of about factors ranging from drought, of course, if you have flooding, of course, that will also be a problem. Flowering, we have shy flowering issues. There are so, sometimes, I mean, uh, uh, some genotypes fail to flower in certain seasons. When certain seasons we have profuse flowering, and then we have genotypes that do not flower at all, you know. So, that obviously, again, um, if pollinating agents are not there or the, the, the amount of flower was available that could also even determine the fruit and seed cells. And then environmental factors can also be affected. There's a whole issue because if you have developed lots of uh, populations along the line, there are no robust ways of trying to determine their genetic identity. Those genetic overlaps can even uh, lead to either mislabeling or other activities. Yes, next slide. Now, so, they, you know, whether populations, uh, I mean, genotypes developed or progenies developed uh, using uh, um, uh, polycross design, you know, is, is comparable to that of nested designs like uh, the North Carolina one. And then also in terms of identity, find the genetic identity of this school. 
crop whether DNA profiling, especially for those uh, derived in body cross blocks, could be an effective way. of uh, determining that is the issues I many we have certainty yes because obviously the that of paternity hello next slide please no what is happening oh uh -huh. next slide next slide yes uh-huh good so no let Let's come to justification. So a good understanding of the flowering duration, that the flowering window of the, of the putative parents that are being used in crossing, the flowering intensity, you know, the fruit and set behavior of them, of course, in addition to obviously economic traits that you are evaluating or you want to be combined in that genotype, a good understanding of those things in parents is very, very important. Because at the end of the day, are using parents with desired complementary traits and genes for the development of those elite progenies. Then also uh, accurate parentage analysis and pedigree uh, relationships will help to determine trait heritability and genetic progress in the crop. And of course, assessing, you know, silly traits and uh, that in terms of their growth and development parameters and all that in early populations that, development use, uh, that are developed using different mating designs, very, very important. This we are actually not quite uh, captured in previous researches, but now, I mean, they have been done. Next slide, please. Yes, let's go to the objectives. Next slide. Okay, so the specific objectives of this study were, were one to assess the degree of uh, pollination success under two mating designs, and then wanted to determine the paternity and uh, establish genetic relationships between parents and progenies that are developed using these two mating designs, then to uh, assess uh, viability, that seed viability, seedling growth, and yield attributes of these progenies that are developed using these two techniques. Next slide. Please, next slide. Okay. So for experiment one, you know, uh, we use the three is to one female to plant relationship, a total of 12 uh, parental genotypes. And we are used, of course, three males and nine females. And then this experiment was carried, carried out at, at Ibadan, Nigeria. And all of our experimental procedures, as we are seeing there, we are carried. And then for the reproductive trace, about nine we are captured based on uh, what uh, ASRAT uh, 2016 recommended in terms of data collection. So we wanted to really. Certain the degree of relationships between the parent and their progenies, you know, by doing some population genetic analysis. Next slide, please. Hello, next slide. Okay, yeah. so from the result, we're seeing generally, um, we can see that uh, in a polycross system, we have higher number of uh, fruit sets. First, we are saying the number of uh, the number of uh, uh, the number of males and the females, the flowers, the, the flowers, the number of flowers that we are pollinated, and all that. When we look at the mean values of the 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 North Carolina one design, for instance. In comparison with this, we can see that um, there are some of that are lower than even for those parameters that are uh, 
that we are studied that we are lower compared to even the polycross. So in the polycross system, there are like uh, lots of uh, fruit sets in that system. And uh, yeah, there are lots of fruit sets in that system compared to even the, the, the North Carolina one design. And that could relate to the fact that, you know, because of the lots of flowers and the pollinating agents that are present, you know, lots of flowers were actually pollinated under that system. Now for the, for the North Carolina one system, young flowers are really that tiny and crossing using the controlled method, you know, the control PRYs method like the nested design or North Carolina one, depending on the pollinate, uh, pollination agent, you know, there could be damage in court on the stigmatic surface of the flower, which could even affect, you know, the, the development of the thing. So in the final analysis, we'll look at the fruiting index, you know, and comparing both systems, we could see that uh, the fruiting system under the polycross is higher polycross system of the slides, please. Next slide. Hello. Okay, so this table more or less is also showing us um, the number of seeds per plant. You know, we have the number of abort, abort seeds, the number of field seeds per plant. We have the number of seeds per fruit, you know, and then the seed index, uh, the number of seeds that were actually obtained worked out in indices. Now, when we look at the two system, the polycross system had higher number of um, fruits produced by plant, higher number of fruits produced by plant, you know, compared to that of the North Carolina one system. When we look at the highlighted red values, these are the mean values. Under the polycross system, the number of aborted seeds you know, are higher in the polycross system. However, when you look at the number of uh, uh, feces also produced by plant, they are really higher. So those two values, both the aborted and the number of um, feces produced by plant, they were higher compared to the, the, the polycross system. But when we look at the North Carolina one uh, design system, we could see that the number of seeds produced by fruit is higher compared to the number of fruits, uh, the number of seeds produced per fruit in the polycross system. Now in the North Carolina one design, we have uh, is a controlled wise technique, depending on the pollen, uh, uh, pollinating agent, sufficient pollen somehow is loaded on the stigmatic surface. And because yam has like um, three uh, loops and each of them produces like two seeds, so the, the total amount of seeds that can be produced by that, if everything is actually successful, there could be six. But uh, we, we can see that in this system, we can really have higher number of seeds per fruit, you know, compared to that of the polycross, which indicates that in the polycross, yeah, although there are lots of flowers, you know, but uh, it, 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 it is possible that not quite sufficient pollen uh, landed on the stigmatic surface even for the development of the seeds per fruit, per, per plant, as we saw earlier, you know, it was higher. Okay, next slide. Now, when we did the regression analysis of the, 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 uh, the, the, the seeds formation on the pollination, success of pollination and number of flowers pollinated per plant, we could see that in the polycross system, um, we, we have about 66, 66.5% you know, of seed formation that was actually due to um, the, the, the pollination success and then also the number of flowers pollinated as compared to that of the, the, the North Carolina one design, which is not even significant there among the various families that we are evaluated. Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay. Now, so as we continue with this, 
we look at the relationship. Now, now you can go to the others. Like we can look at the relationship. The inbreeding coefficient obviously is zero. Now, of course, we are dealing with our issues, uh, genotypes that we are used there. So um, even the mean kinship is low and it ranges from 2.1 through 4.9. And also the genome uniqueness ranges from uh, zero to 100. Uh, percent you know <clears throat> so we can see that for those uh, population parameters that we are examining normally the low population you know uh of the low population statistics values there possibly indicates low per degree you know depth observed even in the studied populations you know so we can see that they are, they are generally low but we can get to the next slides where I will show lots of other relationships. Okay, when we look at this uh, heat map, I shows the population structure and the diversity in the parental genotype study. We could see that um, six distinct um, groups we are formed, six distinct groups we are formed. And also when we look at the genetic parameter estimates of those uh, uh, various parents that we are used in the crossing, we could see that uh, you know, the, the, the genetically diverse because even face of their to, to know the, 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 any kind of relationship and those parents use, you know, those values we are really low, indicating that we are really genetically diverse. So the relationship uh, that will actually show. And now, when we look here, when we look here, we could see that the, there are various relationships, and those relationships we are low. Like for the mean kinship uh, versus uh, the, the the fruit set, we could see that it was low positive, and that was the mean kinship, and that uh, in the polycross system for fruit set also was low, which is 0 0.05. That was in the previous slide. I'm just trying to, you know, speak on some things on those previous slides. Then looking at the genome uniqueness, you know, um, and the polycross uh, system, we could notice that it was, the relationship was R equals to minus 0 0.014, you know, which was really low and it's negative. And for the fruit set in the North Carolina one system, it's positive, but it's a low positive 0 0.23. You know, so it was actually low. So when we look at all those values, we can find out that yes, they were really low like for the, the, the thing, but the allelic richness was really high. The diversity, I mean, the parents were diverse somehow, even um, the parents that were used in the crossing. So the key findings are here, and I think everybody can just read them. I don't want to quite repeat myself. So for the paternity test, you know, of the progenies that we are, developed, you know, essentially we had, uh, for most of the families, we, we, we took 50 samples and then all the 12 periods that we are used, you know, we are used even for the paternity test in the polycross system. And uh, so it follows like here, I mean, leaves we are collected early in the morning around seven o'clock and then we brought them into the lab you know, and uh, kept them on ice. And then they are kept in the freezer, they are uh, freeze dried. And then of course, DNA was extracted from those using established protocol, even the uh, De La Porta et al, 1983. So the quantity and the concentration were also determined. And those uh, DNA samples were sent to uh, Canembra, you know, uh, Canembra in Australia for DNA sequencing. And those uh, sequence things, uh, information, the raw hub map file was sent to ROS and then, uh, then was converted to variant code file. You know, so of the 20,000 um, SMP markers that are subjected to field training, we had about 6,602, you know, that we are retained for various analysis. So for the, 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 the phenotypic traits that we are collected, you know, from, from those ones, I mean, the, first the seeds we are grown in glasshouse, 
and a, a completely randomized design. And then the seedlings we are transplanted uh, into this greenhouse established in blocks of 20 in a randomized complete um, block design. Next slide. Next slide, please. Okay. So what we are seeing here, basically, uh, we can see a polycross block. And this polycross block, the establishment of the polycross block was based on selection of isolated field, uh, an isolated field that is about at least 700 uh, meters away from other you know, crops. So it was really an isolated field. And then we also had a field design that we used. Um, so a field design was used, which is the uh, balanced neighbor effect design, you know, where at least uh, the females that were planted had equal opportunity to be uh, pollinated by the, 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 the male parents that were uh, provided there. And then also, as we look here, we can see that the molecular data that could be uh, derived, that could be obtained, will help even in parental selection and also will help, you know, in. Um, parentage analysis. We go for parentage analysis, molecular parentage analysis. You need molecular information for that. And then again, of course, statistical, uh, a robust statistical package so that parental assignment or paternity assignment can be done. You know, so uh, this is just a diam diagrammatic flow chart showing really how the polycross was uh, established and then how parentage analysis was uh, conducted even on, on the various progenies that were obtained in that system. Then, um, yeah, so I think I've, I've already spoken on the v VCF tools and then the tassel, of course, that is used for uh, the various also, uh, the various uh, population statistics and uh, genetic statistics that were also obtained even from that study. Now, based on this uh, table, table five, we could see the number of samples that we are sent, you know, the DNA samples, number of DNA samples that we are sent. And then even after quality check, those that we are obtained. We could see like for those in the, the family TDR 16, um, just trying to watch, okay, 1689 in red here, <clears throat> Only 28 was, um, you know, obtained from them by after subjected to a quality check. And then we have 28 hybrids obtained from all of those. We could see here that um, two families, we are really like unique in a way. TDR 1686, no, TDR 1866, uh, 1866, TDR 1688, in which the same amount of samples sent we had all of them retained after quality check, and then all of them had 100%, you know, <clears throat> paternity even determined in them. But aside them, we can see a number of others that really had high percent um, uh, paternity determined in them, you know. So um, now when we look at the mean values, the mean values, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Table six here shows uh, the, the, the various uh, pattern appearance, you know, their contribution and the various progenies that we have formed. We could see that TDR 9509132, you know, uh, contributed highest, you know, contributed highest. If you look at the mean contribution here, it's about 65.63%, uh, which is highest compared to this one that had even the lowest TDR 99, 0, 27, 89. You know, that's just uh, indicating that on equal parental contribution, you know, even in, um, in the various progenies formed. And then that could also relate to uh, the, the, the pollen viability, you know, within the pollen parents that we are used. And then um, on the whole, we could see that 96.2 percent, you know, of progenies, we are the paternity of 96.2, you know, uh, was actually determined. So the the 3.8 could be foreign pollen, likely foreign pollen 
that came outside the, the Polynesian law. Next slide. So this is just indicating uh, one of the scenarios of what exactly happened. Now, for the three putative parents that are in orange, yellow, and then this ash is color, you know, the light or the gray color, we can see that these are the, uh, the pattern appearance and then the blue, the blue line indicates the female parent because for each female, these three males we are subjected to reality, those are contributed highest in the formation of that. So we can say that um, TDR uh, 95 stroke uh, 0932 contributed highest, the one in the pink, because the one in the pink, then with the blue, you know, those that have those two highest values are those actually are the, the parents even for those progeny. So that is just what this particular one is indicating. Next slide, please. Hello, next slide. Yes, yeah, so this is just uh, the uh, pedigree reconstruction of Polycross family using the Helium software now. So we wanted to visually perceive like just what has been indicated. This red line indicates it's a female parent having all of these uh, progenies. So of this total amount of progeny, we can see 1932 here on the far right here, uh, having most of the progenies here. And then we can have the other contributions by the other two main factors. Next slide, please. Hello, next slide. OK. So um, now this is the ceiling traits that we are assessed in the study. And then the days of first seed emergence, for days to first seed emergence, we could see that it took um, longer days for first seeds to emerge. The mean days, number of days to first seed emergence was higher in the polycross system compared to that of, that of the North Carolina one. Design. That is really expected because in the polycross system, pollen is coming from those uh, three different parents. But like for the North Carolina one design, you have a, you have a well-structured thing. You take a particular male, you pollinate those set of things. And obviously the variance, I mean, the, uh, could not be that wide compared to even that of the polycross system. Now when we look at the coefficient of uh, velocity of germination to uh, the seed emergence speed and that of the germination index and the final germination count coming down to the seed, seed in vigor index. We could see that these values we are really uh, higher, slightly higher than those of significantly higher than those of the polycross system. Yeah, obviously if they took a uh, lower number of, to germinate and all that, of course, the other growth parameters could be enhanced. And uh, that was really really uh, shown, I think. Next slide, please. Yes, next slide. OK. Now, look, looking at the days, OK, no, the previous slide. Looking at the days days after germination. The previous slide is the one I'm commenting on. Generally, for all the families, we could see that germination increased with time, significantly increased with time, <clears throat> you know. And then for this uh, table that is just, uh, that is being shown on table nine, um, we can say that for the number of stems produced per plant, you know, um, it was like higher here, slightly higher in the polycross system compared to uh, the North Carolina one system. And then even for tu uh, the tuber length, the tuber width also, when we look at the parameters here on the investigation, we could see that, yeah, they were like, uh, for here, for the tuber width, it was lower in the polycross compared to that of the North Carolina one. Then uh, for the the, non, uh, the length, it was slightly longer. The, the main tuber length was slightly longer in the polycross compared to that. You know, of course, yeah, it is variable. And we know that, um, yeah, there's that kind of variation. And then when we finally look at the 
the tuba wheat uh, plant. Um, in both system, it was not it, it was not really significant. So polycross could be really a good way of generating high amount of seeds, you know, um, even for breeding for genetics purpose, sufficient amount of seeds. Go to the next slide, you know, so that um, one will be able to do enough work. So the key findings here in this particular uh, study, we are, as we can see, um, yeah, complete paternity was established in those two, uh, in those two uh, families, and then for families eight, uh, 1686 and 1689 that had the lowest, we had about 74 and 56% paternity established in them. And we noticed that, of course, uh, in terms of the, the germinability and the growth parameters, they were variable even in both systems, uh, mating systems that we are used. You know, progenies from those both, uh, uh, both mating systems are variable. And then delayed germination of seeds and sprouting, you know, contributed to reduced effective growth duration, you know, of yams developed using those two mating schemes. So, um, and a whole in conclusion, the polycross, the polycross technique showed high pollination success high pollination success compared to that of the North Carolina one, and therefore has great potential for young population improvement relative to that of the North Carolina one. Also paternity tests and saline trait assessment in the white yam established that the progenies are adequately grouped and traced back to their putative parents. And then also polycross derived progenies possess higher phenotypic plasticity, plasticity, you know, with a higher potential of uh, creating, yeah, creating more useful variability in ceiling traits compared to that of the nested design. So the recommendations we are that uh, for high population, I mean, pollination success, polycross mating is really good relative to that of the nested system, you know, and that, suggests its exploitation having a large uh, population development of this particular organism. And then successful paternal reconstruction, you know, of half C progenies could contribute to pedigree identification, selection, and accurate prediction of gene flow. You know, sometimes even having released a variety over years, farmers will have to give their names. So now that it has been established that, yeah, to a greater extent, you can recover, you can reconstruct, you know, the paternity, the identity of those things. That could be a very good thing, even for uh, genetic progress assessment in this particular organism. Also, of understanding of seed germination and sailing trait attributes could contribute to, uh, to selection of superior genotypes living in early populations. Those are some of our recommendations from the studies. And then we have made some, these are some of our publications from those work. There are more than this, but I just captured this for this purpose. Next slide. Yes, so um, I would like to thank the University of Ghana because uh, IITA, the Africa YAM program, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the uh, ITRC, Sierra Leone, the government of Sierra Leone, all stakeholders, even STEM, for your various contributions, you know, um, in, uh, in making this thing a great thing. And also the photo you are seeing there is just a cross section of the scientists at IITA with whom I work, scientists and, and field workers with whom I work. And um, that's my contact to anyone want to, you know, contact here after concerning many other things. I've just highly summarized this work. There are lots to, to read. Then I want to thank this valuable audience for your keen attention. Thank you very much. Thank you.